I'm Rod Chapel, and welcome to the Rod Chapel Show. We're excited to have you here and be with you today. As you know, we try to bring interesting topics, those that affect people that may start at the courthouse or the legislature. And today, we are really at the nexus of where democracy meets the people, and that is the ballot box. I'm excited to have my friend Julie Allen with us. Thanks for being with us, Julie. Thanks, Rod. I appreciate it. Looking forward to spending some time talking about voting and elections and all the different types of uh, voting rights, what's so important that's going on today. It, I can't imagine a more timely topic, right? You know, exactly. Uh, from Jeff City all the way to D.C., everybody's talking about voting. Everybody's talking about voting, that's right. I thought that we probably ought to start with the very top. I know that there's some federal legislation mm -hmm. that we're looking at today, uh, and I'm talking about nationally, that they may actually vote on today. Right. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? There's some federal legislation. Really, it started with John, John Lewis. He um, did the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act, and that has not gotten passed. Uh, really, what's before the Senate is the Freedom to Vote Act, and this is really a way to set the playing field across the nation to make sure that every eligible voter has a chance to vote. It addresses topics like um, allowing early voting across the nation, which most people say, well, that's really not that important. Some people will say that's not that important. Mm -hmm. But let's think about it. If you can only vote on Election Day, yeah. then people who either have to work, they cannot afford to take off, right. um, they do not have the public transportation that allows them to get to the election, uh, to cast their ballot on Election Day. They have child care uh, kind of challenges. They're an elderly person. They don't have family around. These types of things, these, you know, everybody, not everybody can vote on Election Day. Right. And so something like early voting is just so pivotal to making sure that every eligible voter really has an opportunity. And lots of places have early voting, so I, it's, I, sometimes I wonder what the controversy is really about. Many, many states have early voting. It's been around for about probably 20 years, mm -hmm. 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. it, research has shown it really doesn't favor one party over the other. Right. It really just allows your voters to get out in a time frame that's convenient for them, that works so that they can actually vote, mm -hmm. which is you know, just so important. To allow it, and there are other other types of provisions in in the legislation, including uh, ways to give funding for the election authorities to be able to get the most current machines and mm -hmm. equipment, mm -hmm. because you know that's very important to be able to efficiently run your elections, and also just to make sure your equipment is being maintained in the way that it should, and to have the most current equipment available. Well, and we've heard lots of uh, stuff in popular media about all oh, these machines and all this other stuff. Uh, it seems like this would be a, num a great way to make sure that we have machines that are working. It would be a great way to make sure we have machines that are working. And you know, um, there's a lot of work that goes into elections throughout the nation. Mm -hmm. It's really, there's mach every machine is tested before every election. It is tested by a bipartisan group of individuals. In other words, both of the major parties are invited to see the testing. Mm -hmm. So, and then the, that machine is secured, every machine is secured so that there's not access to it. And then it is tested after the election before the ballots are certified to make sure that it is still has the integrity in the way it's counting those ballots. So our machines are very important. Mm -hmm. And each of our election authorities throughout the nation take, take it very seriously. So, no, yeah. no doubt. Well, and, and as I understand it, this Freedom to Vote Act would also remove some of the Jim Crow era um, laws that are literally springing up around the country to prevent people from voting. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. There are some laws across the country that are springing up, you know, like Texas is very, mm -hmm. very well known, and in Missouri. Yeah. They try every year to pass laws related to requiring uh, photo identification in order to vote, which would eliminate about 300,000 people from their ability to vote. Um, in Texas, they won't even allow you to provide water if you're waiting in line. 
Um, they actually have prevented ballot drop boxes from being used, which are secure mm -hmm. methods for individuals to drop off their ballots. We do know, research and studies do show that individuals of color and individuals in economic, social, um, disadvantaged areas mm -hmm. end up spending the most amount of time in the line to cast their ballot, sometimes three to eight hours wow. to cast a ballot as to where our more prosperous areas, our typically uh, more white areas, well, you know, you drive up and you probably aren't going to have to wait very long to cast your ballot. So um, this national bill would really set standards for the maximum amount of time somebody would have to wait in line. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it would help eliminate that disparity for individuals of color and individuals who are in uh, some of the more uh, impoverished areas of the nation. That's huge. What, what good is being a, a citizen or a voter if you don't get the opportunity to vote? Right? That's exactly right. And really, every voter who's eligible, their ability to vote strengthens our democracy. That's right. It's not really a party. Mm -hmm. It's not really a party thing. It's not whether they're going to be more Republican or more Democratic voters. It's that we all should want every eligible voter to have the ability to vote. And that's really what these bills are about. Right on. So if, uh, if someone wanted to lend their voice to that, uh, to, in, in support of the Freedom to Vote Act, so that they can actually vote early, uh, be able to vote on election day, uh, make sure that their area gets adequate machines that are working just like everybody else's and that they don't have to spend a day waiting in line in order to vote, what should they do? Contact your senator, your U.S. congressman. Um, here in Missouri, mm -hmm. it's going to be Senator Blunt. Mm -hmm. And you know Senator Blunt is leaving, he, he is retiring, and so this is his good opportunity to really uh, do what's right for, yeah. for the American people. And then Senator Hawley. Um, those are really the two that you should be contacting. You can just go to, um, you know, on the internet and just say contact Senator Hawley, contact Senator Blunt, and they're going to have both an email capability and a way to call them. Excellent. Excellent. And if you call them every day, it's not too much, too often. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I just called the other day, and it's a really quick process. It is very you quick. Dial the number, it routes you through, and yeah. then you get to leave a message. Yeah. Um, you actually had to call twice. Well, one for each, yeah. so it, it yeah. took less than five minutes. That's what I was going to say. It's about less than five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well yeah. worth it. Well, and, and then we've got voting issues here at home too, right? We have voting issues here at home. We actually are starting our April election is coming up. Okay, okay. April 5th. Oh, well, wait, hold on just a second. Our viewers don't even know who they're talking to. Julie, you got to tell us about they yourself a little bit. I've known you for... A few years. I'll say. I'll say. I won't say how long. I won't say how long. <laughs> a few years. A few years. But, but uh, tell us about your background and how you came to this work. Yeah, I actually have been in, in, working in, in Missouri government, actually in state government, for probably 15 to 20 years. Um, I actually started in Mississippi. I'm from Missouri. Grew up in Osage County. Mm -hmm. And I lived a lot of my adult life in Mississippi and when I moved here I started working uh, for the Department of Revenue. Mm -hmm. I was their director of customer service so we spent a lot of time relating you know really working with the citizens of the state and uh, one of the things that we worked on was really this whole drive to require photo identification. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's when I first started getting familiar with the fact that photo identification was important to different, really to different parties. Uh, you know, it, it became a party issue. Uh, the Republicans want to require photo identification and the Democrats realize that you've got 300,000 people that it could disenfranchise. So <clears throat> that's when I started becoming familiar with this whole issue. And honestly, as a middle class, you know, white person, mm -hmm. I, First of all, thought well, it was I thought it was already required because I always gave my driver's license, uh -huh. and then I thought, well, what's the big deal in getting a photo ID? Because to me, it's not a big deal to go get a photo ID. Right. So fast forward to I then became the executive director of the Ethics Commission, which is really the commission that oversees 
campaign finance mm -hmm. related to your candidates and your elections and lobbyists and really the um, conflict of interest and sort of the ethical, the laws around ethics for public officials. So I did that for uh, several years as the executive director of the Ethics Commission and then I went to become the elections director for the state uh, working at the Secretary of State's office under Secretary Jason Kander. That's where I really became very aware of what requiring photo identification in Missouri really means. Mm -hmm. And uh, I became aware that, first of all, the way we have it now is it works perfectly. Mm -hmm. You know, you can show up at the poll, you can show a driver's license or some type of photo identification, but you could also bring a most recent uh, utility bill with your name and address. Ah, okay. It has to be your correct name and address, but it could be a utility bill, it could be a pay stub, it could be a bank statement. It could be something that you have in your house mm -hmm. that will let you vote. Wow. And what I realized is there are a lot of people that, um, you know, 300,000 is not small change. No, that's a lot of people. And there are the elderly who may not have the ability to get a driver's license. Um, they may not have family. They may not have the supporting documents, uh -huh. like the birth certificates and those types of things. Mm -hmm. And you have, just like getting to the polls mm -hmm. is difficult, yeah. going to get all the supporting documents and being able to take time off. If you rely on public transportation, do they go during the hours that you're available? Do you have childcare? All those different things that would keep you from getting a photo ID. And really, the system works very well. Mm -hmm. You know, you're able to take that identification to the polls, you can take your utility bill, and you can go in there and vote. So this is when I started become, becoming aware of the issues around making sure every eligible voter has the ability to vote. And I realized that for someone like me, it's easy to go vote. You know, I just hop in my car and I go do it on that day. Mm -hmm. um, I have a great employer. They, you know, want to make sure you go vote. But not everybody has all of those types of amenities and really the access that I have. Yeah. And so, anyway, my history is I spent time as the elections director. It was a, both it and the Ethics Commission were uh, nonpartisan positions. In okay. other words, it okay. wasn't aligned to one party or the other. Um, and through that, I um, really became very involved and very passionate in both of those roles about elections. Wow. I, I'm glad you did. Uh, here in Jefferson City, I know that you've worked uh, with a number of organizations and uh, many events under the name of JC Votes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which at times is uh, through the NAACP or through Faith Voices mm -hmm. or in conjunction with any number of different groups, including Building Community Bridges. Right. Uh, we've had a bunch of events here, right? We have. Uh, tell us about some of those. We have had some really great events, and we have mostly through the NAACP, but like you said, it's really a community event. It's really community work. It's uh, Faith Voices. It's Building Community Bridges. Bridges it's uh, Moms Demand Action. Mm -hmm. Really, anyone is welcome to join us in these different things that educate voters, yeah. whether it's who's going to be on the ballot or when is the election going to happen. We have a Facebook page, uh, JC Vote. Uh, and also you can always see our information on the Jefferson City NAACP page. Mm -hmm. But in it, we, for instance, we um, often will register individuals to vote a lot of times at Community Park. And you know, you really get to meet people and you get to hear virtually every time we have registered people to vote, mm -hmm. someone comes up and usually it's, they didn't even know the event was happening, but they come up and they say, I don't think I can vote and here's why. Uh -huh. You know, either it's we moved mm -hmm. and we didn't realize we needed to change our address or a very common fallacy is I um, have a conviction on my record mm -hmm. and I don't believe I can ever vote again, which uh -huh. is not true in Missouri. If you uh, have served your time in your probation, you then are eligible to vote. Just another individual was disabled and, and they said, you know, I've never registered because I've never felt like I would be able to get to the polls. Mm -hmm. So we helped them. So there are a lot of different events that we've had on registering to vote or getting out to vote um, that 
have, have really, you know, you, you realize that there are so many different situations oh, yeah. that people need help with in getting, getting their ability to vote. Some of those have included uh, Halloween. Halloween. Right? Trunk have, or treat. We've or, had trunk yeah. or treats. Yeah. And we have had um, photo booths. Yeah, and, there's just been photo. And uh, backpacks, wasn't there a backpack we, giveaway? We did a backpack giveaway yes. um, in conjunction with the city and mm -hmm. building community bridges and other organizations. And we gave out information at the backpack, uh, two different backpack giveaways, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, we get involved with the community. Do you think we'll keep doing some of those events? We will keep doing some of those events. In fact, look for us. Um, we will probably be planning some events in March mm -hmm. because March 9th is the deadline to register to vote ah. for the April 5th election. Okay. okay. So we will be looking to do events around getting out and registering to vote. Ah. So, and, and you re I know somebody is watching today and yeah. they're saying, I don't know if I'm registered. I don't know how to register. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the process and where to go if somebody wants to get registered or check their registration? Sure. You can really, if you have access online, okay. you can go to sos.mo.gov slash elections and you can check your voter registration there. You can uh, apply online to register to vote okay. using like your iPhone. Hmm. You know, you can use your iPhone now. It's going to ask you to sign, and when you sign with your finger, you're going to need to sign with care because that's now your legal signature for, for vote. That's your voter registration signature. Okay. So, for instance, when I've done it, sometimes I have to use my finger, clear it, use my finger till I get the sense of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the second time around, you, you get that signature in good shape. But, um, yes, you can go online to register to vote and check your voter registration. You could, a library has, a, has voter registration forms. Oh, okay, okay. Um, your local motor vehicle office has voter registration. Mm -hmm. If you're uh, not sure if you're registered to vote, and Rod, I know we've got an, a number for, that you can call for the NAACP. Absolutely, absolutely. That's 844-NAACP-HELP. Okay. Yep. You can call that number. 844-NAACP-HELP. Yep. Call the number and we will help you too. That's right. And um, you can always call your local election authority, which in, in Cole County mm -hmm. is our Cole County election authority here in Jefferson City. Mm -hmm. He's Steve Korsmeyer, and um, they will help you too. So there's a lot of places you can go to get help, and don't let it intimidate you, you right. know? Yeah, that's right. How much does it cost? It's free. Registering it's free. is free. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, and so you can literally do it from your smartphone. You can do it off your smartphone. Yeah, or you can go to any of these places, yep. including the library, the DMV, uh, the election authority, yep. and you know all of those places have people that will help you fill it out. Right. Right. Is it? Does it take a long time? Less than five minutes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Is Less it than five minutes? Short little form. It's a short little form, mm -hmm. about that size of a form. Oh, okay. You have to say your reg your, that you're a U.S. citizen because mm -hmm. that's one of the requirements. You have to be 18 or over. If you're 17 and a half, you can register to vote. Okay. Uh, but in order to vote, you have to be 18 or over. Gotcha. Um, and then you give your name and address and information like date of birth, mm -hmm. um, if it's a new registration. One thing that people don't realize too is if you have moved from one county to the other, okay. in other words, if somebody moved from like Greene County to Cole County, mm -hmm. that's considered a new voter registration by law and they do have to complete a, a voter registration form by the deadline in order to vote in that election coming up. And nobody's going to do it for you automatically. You have to do it. You got to do it yourself. Some people think that going to the post office and changing their address changes their voter registration. It does mm -hmm. not. By law, you have to go do the voter registration change form. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so March 9, 2022. 2022. So if we want to vote in April in the local, uh, is there a state election or anything on the state ballot? I don't know. April, April is local. April's local. Okay. Right. So, at this point. Yep. Yep. All right. So in order to vote in our local April elections, anywhere in the state of Missouri. Anywhere in the state of Missouri. Got to be registered by March 9. Right. Okay. Easy process, do it from your phone. Yep. You know, you can do it from the internet. You can go someplace if you like that yep. better. No problem. Okay. Uh, and then when you get ready to vote, how does that work? When you get ready to vote, really all you need, if you're voting in person, mm -hmm. uh, all you need is that form of identification. Okay. 
Um, like I said, it could be your utility bill, mm -hmm. uh, make sure it's current, and make sure it has your correct address and okay. name on it. Uh -huh. um, it could be a pay stub that has your name and address on it. It could be a bank statement. It can be a driver's license. It can be a government ID. You know, there's a, a good variety of, of ways you can take your identification, but you do need to take your identification to the polls. Okay. So if you do not know, once you register to vote, mm -hmm. let's back up a little bit, if you okay. don't mind. No, sure. Once you register to vote, mm -hmm. within seven, about seven day, business days, you will get a notification from the county clerk mm -hmm. that says, you know, I've received your voter registration. Okay. Um, you are, you know, here's where your, your polling place is. Okay. They will tell you where your polling place is, and it will have a name and address. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> that will tell you where your polling place is. Now, sometimes what election authorities face in finding polling places is it has to be somewhere, you know, that's uh, op accessible to the public. It has to have accessibility. And it's gotten more and more challenging to find polling places. So sometimes your polling place can change. Okay. And so you may want to look it up or, and confirm it. Um, you can do that, again, at sos.mo.gov hmm. okay. Okay. slash elections okay. and find my polling place, and it will tell you. You can also, you know, call any of those other places that we talked about. Call the county clerk. Um, and like I said, in Cole County, it would be Steve Korsmeyer. Mm -hmm. Call the Secretary of State's office. Um, call the NAACP number and say, I need help finding my polling place. That's right. That's right. And at least for the first two, there are people who are paid by tax dollars to help right. you be able to vote, right? That's right. And it's just a matter of calling them and getting that help. Yeah. And they'll be, they'll be happy to help you. Absolutely. And same with the NAACP, except for there's no tax dollars. That's there. right. That's <laughs> right. It's all volunteers. It's just volunteer. <laughs> so um, essentially, what you get up, you get your identification. Mm -hmm. Uh, the polls open six to six in the morning to seven at night. Okay. So you have that time frame to go vote, and when you go in there, you will. They will ask you for your identification. They will ask you to repeat what your address is. Mm -hmm. They will have you sign on what they call a poll pad, but it's just like signing on when you're picking up groceries or something, and you or you know a credit card kind of signature on a pad. Okay. And, and they will hand you a ballot. Wow. And we just have a couple of minutes left. Can you tell us if people uh, cannot get there in person? What should they do? If you can't get there in person, you can vote um, absentee. Okay. But you need to have, in Missouri, you have to, there are seven reasons you can vote absentee. One is you don't intend on being present where you could go to the polls. Okay. One is you intend that you'll be sick, you're unable to go to the polls, mm -hmm. or you're caring for somebody who's confined, uh, or you're um, an election worker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those are different ways that you can request an absentee ballot, and um, you would do that through your election authority. And if I know today, I know registration isn't until, doesn't end until March 9, but if I know right now. You should I'm go ahead be, and request your absentee ballot for April right we now. We can do that. So in Cole County, we would call? You would call the Cole County Clerk's Office, okay. Steve Korsmeyer. Steve Korsmeyer. And, and that's... you would ask him for an absentee ballot. They okay. will ask you why. They will send you an absentee ballot request. Okay. And then you will uh, fill that out, and then you will get your absentee ballot. You can also, they also have hours to vote absentee in person. Mm -hmm. Um, usually that's close to an election. It may be the Saturday before the election. It's very limited, usually, times. But you can go in there and tell them you're wanting to vote absentee. They will ask you why, and then they give you a ballot, and you actually cast the ballot at that point. Julie, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you lending your skill, your expertise, your experience uh, to the public in this way. Uh, your work with JC Votes, the NAACP, and so many other groups has been uh, instrumental in ensuring that this democracy continues to function in the way that it's supposed to. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell the folks before we leave today? Make sure you vote April. April are your local elections. It's your school board. Mm -hmm. It is your city council. And these people affect our day-to-day -day lives. They affect how our children are educated. 
They affect um, our streets, our police, our policing, um, our parks and recreation. Everything about our daily lives is really, uh, you know, our city and our schools. Yeah. So they may, you know, they're equally as important as national elections. So oh. vote in April. It's really important and every person who's registered needs to vote in April. You know, I just had an idea. Maybe we should bring some of those candidates in the local elections and have them on the show That'd so that everybody great. can see their positions on things. That's a great idea. Let's, Let's do, do that. it. All right. All right. Sounds great. Thank you so much for joining us at the Rod Chapel Show. We've had the distinct privilege of having my friend, and uh, I, I will tell you that this is a person that you're going to hear more from, Julie Allen. Uh, we've talked about JC Votes, we've talked about the NAACP, and so many of the other great organizations ensuring that our democratic values are being lived in the communities where we live. It's something that we have a privilege and an obligation to do, and that's voting. It's easy to do, it's easy to register, and it's easy to get your vote counted. Make sure that your voice is heard so that the tax money that we pay for the privilege of being a citizen is actually used in a way that we say. Thanks for being on the Ron Chappell Show. We appreciate you.